Hey what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. So it's been just over a week since update 1.43 launched for Gran Turismo 7. In terms of the original update for the year in January 1.42 that was perhaps the weakest update we've ever received to GT7. So are things looking up with 1.43? I'm going to go category by category today and dive into every single thing about this update and give you my overall opinion. So let's start off with number one the cars So we saw three brand new cars come alongside update 1.43 however we did get a bit of a bonus with the Bulgari VGT now entering its full release and pretty much being available for every GT7 player. Now in terms of the range of prices it was a relatively cheap update. The most expensive was the Bulgari but that's essentially a 1.42 only vehicle uh, but in terms of the rest of the ones the most expensive was 100,000 credits for the Lancer Evo 9 and then we have a few range of prices with the likes of the Audi costing just over 50k and the Renault costing in the 20,000 credit range. We also had a nice selection of cars being available in both Brand Central and the used car dealership which I always appreciate seeing you know I guess a bit of a lower priced option however the price difference really wasn't too much so I'd always recommend just going for the new version. Now in terms of the cars themselves to be honest they were actually really good. Uh, surprisingly so. I honestly feel like this was a very useful bunch of cars. Now mainly the one with the least use is the Renault 4 just due to its overall relative low PP rating even when max upgraded. But I'm pretty sure that will get an engine swap down the line and become some completely ridiculous vehicle a little bit along the lines of the Abarth. So let's start off with the Evo 9 that you're seeing in the background. This was definitely the hero car of the update. The one that's kind of been shown off the most. It kind of always sits front and center in terms of talking about update 1.43. Tons of customization options which I massively do appreciate. And it continues the fact that the Lancer evolutions in this game are just absolutely fantastic. Their main range is around about 700 pp and this is where they absolutely excel. They're insanely grippy, insanely fast and they require very little to get a ton of fun out of. This was a car that had sat on the leak car list for a very long time and tons of people were desperately wanting this one to come to the game. So to finally see that one coming to the game it made the update that much sweeter. So overall I would definitely say that the Lancer Evo 9 was a fantastic addition to the game and probably one of the best cars will receive in 2024 to GT7. It's absolutely great whether you're driving it stock or fully upgraded or just using it as a daily money grinder. You really cannot go wrong with the Evo 9. So next up we have the Audi TTS, a bit of a strange one for me. Returning for the first time since Gran Turismo 6, the TTS is a, you know, decent enough car. In terms of upgradable options and customizable options, there's a ton of things you can do with this vehicle. Again, sitting in that nice kind of average range of around about 700 pp on maximum output as well. So it is a useful vehicle. However, the standard driving for this car was just absolutely off. I really didn't enjoy it in that form. So I guess it loses a few points for that. And I'd say overall it's probably the least interesting of all of the update 1.43 cars specifically whilst okay it can be built to a great standard and it can be completely changed as a vehicle i just find that a lot of german cars are very uninteresting and very lifeless and well for me this is perhaps one of the weakest german vehicles they could have brought in considering there is a ton of much better options out there i know a lot of people loved it in gt5 and gt6 but i really don't feel like it was kind of one of those cars that absolutely everybody kind of went towards in terms of fully customized though like i said it becomes a completely different vehicle and i genuinely do enjoy it for that but again overall it just feels a little bit lifeless a little bit soulless and certainly isn't my favorite but is it a bad car overall uh, well absolutely not it was again very useful for grinding the credits i got some decent time behind the wheel but i don't think i'll see myself gravitating back to it too much once the kind of i guess update 1.43 part fades away however there is one major plus point for this car it does complete the entire generations of the audi tt which i always really appreciate next up we have the renault 4 
perhaps the, I guess, most bizarre car of the update is the only way I can explain it. It kind of came out of absolutely nowhere, and I absolutely do love this car. Whilst it probably is the most useless of the update, I actually feel like it's a complete hidden gem. Whilst in its standard form, it's perhaps one of the slowest vehicles in the game, and it's not going to be breaking any speed records. Once you've got this thing customized and you've kind of played around with the upgrade options, you can make some very, very fun and enjoyable little rocket ships with this thing. It really is a great little car to drive. Whilst it doesn't put out massive numbers, but if you take it to a smaller track and you start going for the handling and you know start playing around with it and fine tuning it, you can get some incredible builds out the Renault 4. I really, really do enjoy this car. I didn't think I'd like it too much. I thought it was just okay. You know, a typical old car. It would be quirky, a little bit like the DS Palace, uh, but it certainly feels like a step above that in terms of its actual racing potential. Once you've got the upgrades on, like I said, this car becomes an entirely different car. And whilst it doesn't quite hit those required PP specs for, I guess, the overall grinding, taking it to some of the slower events in the game, you can have a ton of fun with the Renault 4. So overall, I do massively appreciate this car and I've had some great time behind the wheel with this thing. Bit of a strange one now, I am going to include the Bulgari VGT just mainly because almost nobody had this vehicle when it actually was supposed to release with update 1.42. Obviously it was sat in this sort of, I guess, limited time effect with the whole sort of watch buyers and I, to be honest, it kind of really wasn't a 1.42 car. Now available for everybody with 1.43 and probably nearly everybody's tried it and gave it a go. Overall, this is a much better car than I expected. Whilst okay, it does lack customization options and it does lack any real tuning options all you need is a set of racing mediums or racing hards and well away you go this thing is very fuel efficient very tire efficient and very very fun to drive i absolutely hated it in its standard form however once you put the compound attire on that this car should have had from standard which is a racing compound this thing absolutely comes alive i really do enjoy this vehicle although it's controversial and okay it's maybe lacking it is still overall a very very easy to build car and a very very easy to drive car <laughs> So let's stick with the good of update 1.43 until we get into some of the more, I guess, bad parts of the update. Uh, the engine swaps. Now, this has been reduced from 10 with 1.40 and 1.42 down to the typical five that we saw prior to those updates. However, I am always a fan of, you know, quality over quantity. And I would go on to say that none of these engine swaps are actually bad at all. Some really did surprise me. The Swift one with the Suzuki Jimny at first, I was very skeptical on until I plopped the engine in. It doubled its original horsepower and then gave me a much better base to go ahead and tune the car. The 2JZ in the older version of the Supra was absolutely fantastic, as well as the MR2 swap once again being a kind of, I guess, guilty pleasure of mine that I massively enjoyed. Whilst okay, the updates, I guess, engine swaps with the updates previously were good there were a few stinkers in there we'd get maybe 10 of them and seven of them were good where three of them were just completely useless i at least feel like even though the i guess quantity was less the quality all five of them actually really really good and really really enjoyable once i finally got around to swapping them all so after a bit of track time with them all i absolutely do love these engine swaps from 1.43 very japanese heavy though and maybe not the most interesting to some players but definitely worth a try and relatively inexpensive in comparison to some of the other engine swaps we've seen in game So now it's time to talk about probably the weakest part of the update and this was the exact same for 1.42. I don't know what's going on this year with Polyphony and the events. 1.40 had a fantastic broad range of events but since 1.42 and 1.43 these have absolutely just hit the floor. At least with 1.42 we got a menu book and at least a couple of extra events but 1.43 only delivered one extra menu and three 
very, very short three lap sprint races. This is the worst bunch of events we've ever received with any update. It really is a massive shame. This is something that players have been crying out for for a very long time. We need proper events. The problem is with the custom races where we can go and make our own events and our own fun, you kind of need the credits to kind of put the cars in there as well. And you know, you kind of want to explore these different things with custom races but it's not possible if you don't own the majority of the cars. Putting these very short and very low paying events in seems almost completely ridiculous. So each of the events very much catered to one of the specific cars. So event number one, which is what you're seeing here, which is a Sunday Cup Classic, very much caters towards the Renault 4. It's for older vehicles, typically the slowest vehicles in the game will head over here. And again, that's what it was doing for the Renault 4. Overall, it was just an okay event. I didn't hate it because I got put some reasonable upgrades on the Renault and actually found myself having fun but it's a free lap sprint nonetheless so overall the interest isn't going to be there it just felt like another little addition to what is a relatively forgotten series of events in GT7 which is a shame because these can be fun but again they're just too on the short side I honestly feel like if you're going to go down the route of putting these single free events in for a very specific series that are already in the game, then you very much need to be making these more special events, maybe in the form of like the four hour at Sakuba. just make them longer and give us different ways to use these quirky cars. I would have loved to do a mini endurance event in that Renault 4 and absolutely would have had a blast with it. But again, it just turns into the typical free lap sprint. In terms of the second event, this one was mainly for the Audi TTS. It was a Euro 600 race. However, it took place at Suzuka, which is my favorite track in probably the history of anything in terms of circuits, which is a plus point for me. But again, it just fell into this trap of being a free lap sprint. So it was just a case of work your way from the back, get yourself to the front, job done, that's it. There is no reason to go back and complete these events again, unless they pop up in the daily challenge series or the weekly challenge series, should I say. So overall, again, a great track choice, but it could have been a much bigger and better event. So again, I just don't get the thinking here. So the final event of the three uh, catered towards the Lancer Evo 9 and this took place at Laguna Seca as the Japanese Clubman Cup 550 and uh, overall again it was a very weak event. Three lap sprint around Laguna Seca and that's your lot. That was all of the events that came alongside update 1.43 so they were really really poor. This is perhaps the worst bunch of events we've ever seen whilst 1.42 wasn't great at least it felt like it had a little bit more depth than what we see here. Now, to be honest, one thing I'm going to say is that the main complaint of GT7 is the lack of proper pain events and the lack of lengthier events, and it is a massive shame. Now, surely I'm no game, game designer, but it cannot be that difficult to put some predetermined events in and if that's what your player base is crying out for just go ahead and do it if they can take 200 plus days to create one single car for the game then surely they have the time to just put some predetermined event in and just bulk them up a little bit there is no excuse to have so little in terms of i guess events for an update and then class it as a monthly you know i guess thing it just really doesn't seem right to be honest it was a total of nine nine laps at free circuits in free sprint races. So those were the main features from update 1.43 and I'm going to give you my final thoughts now. Now in terms of update 1.42 that was perhaps the weakest update of the bunch and I do still stand by that. One of the main features advertised in these updates are the cars themselves and I feel like this is certainly the case for 1.43. They absolutely carry this update. The cars themselves were absolutely amazing to be totally honest they were much more useful than i expected it was great to finally see the bulgari actually get its release a month later so again 
the cars overall are carrying this update but when it comes to the likes of events they're just getting worse perhaps the worst to date and that's saying something considering 1.42 didn't take that long either so hopefully in terms of the next update we can see something again with the quality of cars continuing on for the cars that people want the likes of the evo 9 was a great addition this time around much better step up than 1.42 but we definitely need to again see 10 more engine swaps per update that was a great feature of 1.40 1.42 and hopefully see much better events and the likes of new tracks and i guess maybe even new mission challenges and such so hopefully polyphony really take this book i guess hammering that they've had recently and start listening to this fan base okay spec 2 was absolutely amazing but that was all the way back in november which is i guess over five months ago at this point so by the time of releasing this video it's been five months since we've had a quality of uh, i guess quality update and uh, yeah polyphony really new need to start stepping things up once again thanks so much for watching i will see you in the next one a big thank you to all of my channel members wigberto mystic jro 49 victory mailton louis vieira old school gamers crazy cobra carl white phil wilmot dominic sailor dan sean and chris 75572 thank you for the continued support and thank you to you guys watching take care guys peace